While this isn't the build I'll be league starting this patch, I believe Poison's Concoction Slayer is still a top 10 league starter, whether that's on SC, Trade, HC, or SSF. While I've played this build as a trickster and an assassin in the past, I believe Slayer is a much better candidate this league due to changes to endurance charges. Masterful form from the Slayer Sensei allows you to scale both offenses and defenses on this build, and Poison's Concoction of Bouncing has just absolutely insane base damage and doesn't need to use a weapon. That means your early gearing is much simpler to do especially if you don't like to make a lot of decisions and try to engage with trade or crafting. This is also I believe the fastest non-caster leveling build for the campaign. It was the build that I had previously used to lead the field during act 5 speedruns and I believe that it has the smoothest leveling once you're level 12 although before that you do need to play a spectral throw on duelist which can be a little bit more difficult this upcoming patch. In this guide, I've decided to include four separate POBs as opposed to four loadouts just because of how I had made them during different points in time. It starts out with a pretty specific and detailed leveling progression, going into a snake bite setup, and then opting for also an explode setup with ass and ass gentle touch, and then finally in the end game, I run a perfect agony crit setup for poison concoction, new to this patch. Because the build is fairly simple, I'm only going to speak on the highlights of each POB as I run through them, but let's get into that right away. So first things first, I want to talk about how easy leveling is. And leveling is really easy on this specifically because it's a duelist. The duelist starting tree is one of the most powerful things that you can click because you have two sources of major more multipliers and two sources of huge increased damage multipliers. I start out by going over here, taking this initial pathing to Gladiator's Perseverance, and this is sort of my damage entering Mervale, although it's quite a bit because of increased attack speed. After this, I'll usually be pathing towards Precise Techniques and Point Blank, and you will have both of those things up for Vault Oversoul, which is really crazy, as well as this Attack Burning Mastery sometimes. Now what this does is, it allows you to get 100% increased damage, but you do need to fulfill the condition of Ignite. Peacock by itself doesn't have any fire damage, so there's two ways I usually do this. The first is through using Herald of Ash with any base fizz damage, so that's like an Iron Ring plus Herald of Ash. The second way I do this is by getting flat fire. Now, if I don't have that on gear already, whether that's jewelry or your gloves, I'm able to get the Benchcraft unlock from Solaris Temple level 2, and then just put that on a ring with an open prefix and no crafted mods. And then later on, you're also able to get this Accuracy Mastery, which is just fantastic. This allows you to drop precision for almost the entire campaign, if not the entire campaign, and also gives you some extra all elemental res. Really crazy. Finally, a lot of Peacock builds think that you need to take this up top. I believe that Field Medicine is roughly as good as Replenishing Remedies as far as a wheel goes, and a lot of people skip Field Medicine anyways, so I think this actually rounds out everything that you need for Peacock. In fact, you could play this tree, just this tree and nothing else, all the way until the end of campaign. It's that strong with gem level scaling and flask upgrades. Going to Cruel Lap, I start to round out a bit more for Q of All in Defense. You'll see that I actually path down here, and I will note that I take the Charge Duration Mastery. I think this is really great. I think it's really important during the campaign when there's a lot of downtime, boss phases, that sort of thing. This tree also gets Leech one node away, Onslaught three nodes away, Phasing here, and the 300% increased damage mastery. It's just a crazy, crazy packed tight tree for everything you'd ever want for both QOL and power. As I get into Merciless Slab, though, there is a little bit of a respec, and eventually I would want to take Pathing over here again, um, because that actually gives you more strength, but that's for later, and I'll show you guys that in the later POBs. But now, I do want to go for the Sword Mastery. So during Cruel Lab, I actually do take the Culling uh, Mastery for Marks, because I use Frenzy generation from having a mark. I usually play like Sniper's Mark. But once you get into a Merc lab, you really want to be switching into Spare. And then you don't actually have boss generation um, for Frenzies. And for that, I get that off the Sword Mastery. So this doesn't actually do anything except give you a good amount of block and Frenzy generation. And it seems sort of like a waste, but honestly, Frenzy gen makes or breaks this build. And block is not a bad thing to have, especially this league. Pretty simple leveling tree, I think it's really easy. In terms of um, lab nodes, I usually take uh, Bane of Legends first, just for damage, because you don't have that many charges right away. I take Masterful Form at Cruel Lab, because that's when you get the Cruel Lab generation for charges, and then Brutal Fervor at Merc, and then I end up with Hesman at the very end. But it's not that important, especially early on, since you already have culling built in. Let's talk about the Snake Bite POB. And this is sort of the core POB that I designed for the build. It is fully SSFable, none of the stuff is actually mandatory. Although obviously each of these once uniques gives a lot of damage, though Snake Bite I do have a plus one frenzy on. If you can't afford that or don't have it or it's not cheap or whatever, just don't have the plus one frenzy. That said, these are really strong, especially when you're non-crit. The other ones to uniques are pretty easy to use. Um, you might wanna delay like Dark Ray until later, or you might wanna delay um, 
lepers or maybe the whispers of doom thing is going to be an expensive annoyance who knows whatever it may be none of these things are mandatory but all of them are incredibly efficient as far as the gear goes i think this is just res suppression pdr gear um one thing to note though is i do really want that endurance charge on chest mod now normally 15 seconds means that your endurance charge is run out but because i have this mastery for 100 percent increased charge duration you'll see that my endurance charges actually last a net of 21 seconds so as long as i'm doing things it'll never run out and when i start a map um i have the on kill so then on bosses you have the passive generation it's a really nice combination of things and i think it's much better than running endearing cry which feels like shit to do honestly the rest of the tree i think is fairly self-explanatory but i should just remind people that peacock bouncing does chain instead of you know whatever the projectile interactions so this mastery ends up being incredibly incredibly strong the final thing to note is that snake bite gives you a ton of poison chance that's when you have max frenzies I still take these poison chance nodes. There's two reasons why. Firstly, I guess from a kill perspective, it can be kind of nice to have just, you know, poison chance cap when you don't have frenzies. But these nodes are crazy. Per node, this is 4.4, and that's just absolutely insane. So even though I'm, you know, wasting, you know, whatever this poison chance is, or, you know, same thing at toxic strikes, they're just such efficient nodes to have early on in the game. As far as the end things to path, I think this is the area that I choose to delay the most. I don't know if you ever need replenishing remedies. We'll have to play with like different flasks and stuff, but it's there. Alternatively, I have a setup for Ass Nest Gentle Touch. Exact same items, except with Glove Slop if you want to play with more Explode, more QLL, but a sizable amount less damage. This is like 6.5 mil, whereas Snake Bite POB was at 9 million DPS. So Snake Bite's just really strong when you're on crit. The difference in this POB, as I mentioned, the poison chance is not a deal because I'm already capped. However, you do need to get a little bit more accuracy over here. And that's pretty much the only difference than POB is just looking for a bit more accuracy and then you won't be hit chance capped. I mean, it is what it is, but I think this setup is much better if you're doing like sustained mapping, expedition, breach, whatever it may be. If you're sitting in maps for a long time, you'll want to do this. Though Peacock bouncing can clear by itself. I do want to go over this crit POB because a lot of people are like thinking, okay, how do you actually use perfect agony? And I think Peacock has one of the best use cases for this, um, especially with this particular setup. It enables a lot of things. So firstly, perfect agony gives you dot multi for crit multi, but you don't want to build dot multi anymore. So what you do is you just skip every single source of dot multi that's on this build and then you just take this node and you just build a crit multi instead. I think I'm also running assassin's mark and you can also go for a crit implicit on your chest and then i'm taking crit multi here crit multi here you know anywhere you can get critical strike chance multi it's quite strong um and this build tends to run a fairly low amount of it so there are options for upgrading there but this is sort of the core template i'm working with and it does give you a lot of damage you can see it's 68 percent more to click this but there's a lot of other benefits to going crit other than having a lot more scaling from that and you know precision watchers would be pretty strong um the first thing is flash charge generation. So I'm anointing field medicine in this, no longer taking the one mastery, and I'm also not taking this anymore. And you might ask, well, how do you sustain your flasks? Well, firstly, you have the Pantheon, which is Rislatha. Secondly, I'm running this mastery. So Peacock and Bouncing has asynchronous hits. And while there is a global cooldown on flash generation, which I think is 10 per second globally shared across all flasks, you're able to reasonably use this to actually generate a lot of flasks, especially while you're mapping. And on bosses, I think you just play either three or four life flasks, and it's pretty good. Um, when I tried running this on my Assassin, which had like 40% crit during that SSF run, it felt more than fine for flask sustain. So that's really, really cool. In terms of um, generation, things are a little bit different. So this also is an Anathema, Ralakesh, Alessius Light, sort of power charge stacker, frenzy stacker, and affliction stacker setup because it's, you know, late game built and so on. So that one gives you a little bit better consistent PDR because you don't need to generate endurance charges right away, but you still need to find a way to do frenzy charge generation. So whereas before we were using the sword mastery, now I'm back to using the mark mastery, but this time I'm using assassin's mark, which does give you a good amount of damage um, for this build. It gives you more crit chance, and it also gives you a good amount of crit multi, and it enables this, which is really, really sweet, I think. Other things to know about the build, um, you don't really need to take poison chance because I'm going to be using snake bite on these. You could also get base attack crit over here. Um, Nathema tends to be pretty powerful, and it's not really actually a socket star build because I choose to not use a lot of things. Um, on various setups, I will think about Plague Bear sometimes, but instead over here, I play a quad curse setup. And I have a lot of mana on reserve, and I have a good amount of leech as well. 
Um, so I do believe you'll be able to play this setup. It's also nice that we have Thrill of the Battle, and I think that this is the only POB I've used it in. It's really efficient here, giving you mana reservation, especially when you're skipping Charisma. And this paired with the new tree over here, giving you the reservation mastery, is just really great. Last thing to know about crit. Really efficient wheel here. Crazy, crazy efficient wheel. This bleed wheel is also super, super powerful. Okay, if I'm correct, I think this is just from your hand. I think Peacock counts as using your hand. So I think that punch um, is kind of infused into the potion of Peacock and that can actually inflict a bleed or something like that. If not, you'll need to get, you know, a little bit flat, but basically the crit wheels are super efficient. But I love this wheel. I love this wheel one of the most. It gives you blind, it gives you crit chance for blinding, and a Peacock hits so often, this 20% chance is just really consistent and super, super cool to have. Flash setups for all the builds will be flexible depending on what kind of content you're doing. Um, mapping wise, I tend to run two life flasks, a quick silver flask, a silver flask, and a quartz flask. It already has really good defenses in general with each different setup. I mean, there's different auras that I'm playing each time, but I think this wheel down here has, you know, underrated effects on your mapping type defense. And generally, I think it's fairly well-rounded, though there are certain things you want to swap out again. Like, you know, if you're doing Exarch, you might play with the Ruby Flask and that will actually be able to perma sustain, you know? So I think that core setup is really great. Finally, if I was to go for Forbidden Jewels, there's two major options that come to mind for me. Maybe three. Firstly, First Strike Last to Fall is pretty, pretty crazy. I do like this quite a bit. Um, there was the option of also going for Fortitude, but First Strike Last to Fall is really cool because when you press Adrenaline in this particular setup, it basically doubles your PDR because of how much PDR you already have. I think it takes you from like around 80 to around 90, basically. Crazy stuff. The second option being Fortitude, great for just, you know, generic defense, although it got nerfed this patch, which kind of sucks. The last one that I would really consider is War of Attrition. It's a fake DPS node, but if you're doing really hard content or you're in hardcore and you want to scale fully into defense, I think War of Attrition is still a really great forbidden set to go for, but only something I would think of if your build is really, really, really bad or you got a four letter name with two numbers in it, that sort of thing. Anyways, hope you guys all have a really good league start. I think Peacock should be fairly straightforward to follow. If you don't know what you want to play, I might consider doing this. Slayer also has really cool scaling options in the late game, and if not, and you don't want to play any of my builds, my final recommendation for you, Slayer Lightning Strike. All right?